Hello guys, this is the Gaming Revolution here and welcome back to an all new Black Ops Cold War video. So we have just gotten the full trailer for Season 6 releasing next week on the 7th of October. And we got some brand new gameplay footage of the final round based zombies map Forsaken, which I will be doing a full gameplay breakdown of within this video. But before I get into all of that, I want to go over everything that is coming in Season 6. So on screen right now you can see the road map. I will also provide a link down in this video's description to trade blog post if you want to read it for yourself. But it starts off setting the premise for the storyline with a quote from Jason Hudson saying we've got a job to do. So with forensic analysis contradicting Atlas Field report of the mission to recover the downed satellite in Algeria and a large scale brainwashing operation playing out in the wake of the efforts to retake the Echelon listening station, Hudson drew the unthinkable conclusion. Adler had been compromised after being captured by Stitch. Well, no sh Adler has been sus for a while now. You're a little bit slow there, Hudson. With Adler off-grid and unresponsive to recall orders, Woods and a hand-picked team of operators hunt him down and return him to home soil. Where Alex Mason uses his unique first-hand experience of the numbers program to break Stitch's hold over their friends and colleagues. So it does seem like the Americans have kind of done reverse brainwashing to Adler after he was brainwashed by Stitch and Mason read the numbers to him that he was brainwashed by, which shows that he has a lot of cognitive strength, and he seems to be a lot more recovered from the numbers. Obviously not fully, but he's dealing a lot better at this current moment in time. So during Adler's interrogation, it became clear that while he had been compromised, his career-long obsession with hunting down Perseus had allowed him to fight Stitch's programming to some degree. In his twisted and tormented mental state, Adler had taken some strictly unauthorized actions of his own. In a desperate attempt to disrupt Perseus's master plan. As seismic charges are triggered in World War II era bunkers containing stockpiles and decommissioned German bombs, the stage is set for the final showdown. So yeah, Adler somehow managed to break the brainwashing slightly and he planted bombs underneath Verdansk in the bunkers and also the mines and a bunch of Verdansk has been destroyed now. Areas like downtown are completely changed so there's going to be a lot of map changes to Verdansk now and the bunkers on Verdansk are going to be reopening and they are World War II themed bunkers to tie into Call of Duty Vanguard which is going to be seeing a new war zone map because Verdansk is disappearing for good and we're getting this tropical Pacific Island map in World War II that's releasing with Season 1 of Vanguard which is rumoured to release on the 23rd of November. So yeah, there's a bunch of points of interest changes to Verdansk as fishers crack open the stadium and downtown and as he said, these World War II era bunkers are now open. So downtown is going to be completely different, but the stadium has been cracked too. And that explains why within 2019 2020's Modern Warfare version of Verdansk, since we're in the Cold War right now, we have a different version of the stadium because it was destroyed. And we do know from the ending of Modern Warfare's campaign that Verdansk was destroyed during the Cold War and was rebuilt after the Cold War. So I'm wondering if at the end of season six, that's how they're going to transition to the new Warzone map. Maybe Verdansk is going to get fully destroyed as a live event or something like that that and then it gets rebuilt after the Cold War to the version we see in Modern Warfare then we end up nuking it again. Verdansk just can't take a break, it just keeps on getting destroyed. Anyways, let's go over the points of interest. So, Adler's actions while AWOL led to Verdansk being leveled, significantly altering areas of the central city and revealing previously undiscovered bunkers packed with stockpiles of World War II era German bombs and armaments. Seismic charges have devastated the stadium and downtown, so I guess if you fall in them, you might just fall to your death. I'm not sure how deep down these fissures go unless you actually make your way down to the mines, which I believe are going to be opening up with this season two. But the old Verdansk Stadium is wrecked due to the man-made earthquake, which sent the cranes towering above down onto the construction zone and soccer pitch. Fortunately, a new stadium was already planned for the site, but now in 1984, I expect greater maneuverability across all levels of this location, including within the cracks of the earth. So you are going to be able to go down into these fissures, but maybe there's going to be parts that are just too deep and you will just fall to your death, and then some parts you're actually going to be able to move about in. So southwest of the stadium, downtown is a chaotic mess as buildings topple into the fissure. Reports from the ground indicate a marquee hotel and several buildings in the vicinity have been destroyed in the blast. The tier one operators expect less verticality in this notorious part of the town, as well as some additional areas to explore. So downtown's going to have a lot less high structure buildings, so there's going to be less 
snipers, the West campers chilling in downtown, which is good. But yeah, I don't get why they've made massive changes to Verdansk right at the last second. Changes people have been asking for for a while. Over the last couple of years, barely any changes have been made to Verdansk, and Verdansk is going away shortly, and now they are finally making changes. Anyways, I'll go into all of the other changes coming in Season 6, but first of all, I want to let you guys be aware of an amazing service to earn some money on the side. I want to give a huge shout out to Pinecone for kindly sponsoring this video. Pinecone Research gives consumers a voice to companies nationwide. It's a great service that allows you to earn easy money and gift cards whilst helping out companies to get data on your likes and opinions, or whatever the case may be, by filling out quick surveys. It's incredibly easy to integrate into your daily life, to get some last minute cash before your friend's birthday, Christmas, or if you just feel like you need a bit of extra cash for yourself. Pinecone is different from other survey brands because it's invite only, which means that you are granted with exclusive opportunities and better service. Besides, there's a guaranteed payout amount for every survey you complete, and the payout is higher than most other survey companies. You can withdraw your rewards via direct deposit or exchange them for products. All you have to do is sign up using my exclusive link in this video's description, pick a survey to complete, and boom, you'll instantly be granted with redeemable rewards that you can use to spend on games, accessories, or whatever you desire. So once again, check out the exclusive link in the description to start earning rewards today. So bringing it back to the topic of Season 6, as you said earlier, the Verdansk bunkers are now open again. So there's probably going to be some Easter eggs, maybe some blueprint Easter eggs again. If there are any, I'll probably have guides on the channel. But yeah, it just is kind of annoying that they've made these changes to Verdansk right at the last second when Verdansk is going very shortly from now. But anyways, hidden beneath Verdansk, Verdansk's surface, long before the original Verdansk bunkers you may have explored previously, was an underground system of passageways and armament rooms. These old German war bunkers have been barricaded off since the war's end, so the bunkers are going to be different to the ones we saw previously in modern days Verdansk. These bunkers have been pretty much unopened since World War II, and it does appear as though there's loads of different rockets and explosives in them, and this is why I think that maybe Verdansk is going to get destroyed for good as some sort of live event. Maybe we're going to use some of the World War II armaments that we discover in these bunkers to get rid of Verdansk fully, and then we transition to the World War II map. So after Adler discovered the existence of these relics from a bygone era, he drilled down through the surface to plant seismic charges to set off a greater explosion. Their mysterious nature hints at what's to come following Vanguard's launch, which as I said is this new World War II map, but yeah, I wonder if we're going to cause some further explosions. And this is really cool because the original Gulag is is going to be returning to Warzone. Honestly, I think this is the best iteration of the Gulag we have seen before. I think previously they should have just had it so that you get a random variation of the Gulag instead of just changing it every season or so. I think it would have just made for more interesting gameplay where when you enter the Gulag, you don't know which one you're going to expect. It adds some RNG into the matter and makes it less monotonous, I guess. But yeah, the original Gulag is back. It's been gone for a while and I guess it is very fitting for the original Gulag to return turn before the dance goes for good. They said that this takes place in an undisclosed and sectioned off level of the deep Zordia prison complex. The arena may not just be as you remember it, but the rules haven't changed. Win this 1v1 to get back into the fray and continue to throw those rocks with reckless abandon. So they are hinting that the Gulag's going to be slightly different now, so we're going to have to see how that plays out. Next up, regiments are going away for good. So with season 6, regiments are going to be frozen because Vanguard's going to be seeing the introduction of a new clan-based system that's going to be rolled out in Warzone by the end of the year, probably with the new map in Season 1 on November the 23rd, so you will not be able to create, manage, switch, or invite people to your regiment, use regiment tags, or receive happy hour rewards after this date. So you have until October the 5th to ensure that you are active in the one you wish to stay in through Vanguard's launch on November the 5th, because then everything's going to get frozen. So now let's go into the exciting stuff, the Black Ops Cold War Zone zombies content. So first of all, we are going to be seeing the final map Forsaken. Obviously, this map is going to be based around the Forsaken, inevitably escaping from the Dark Aether, as we are probably being tricked by Zykov as Requiem and Omega are racing to free him. So in the background right now, I'll just be playing the short bits of gameplay that we got from the trailer, but it starts off with a quote from Sergei Ravanov saying, this is the place we must make our stand here. So in Mauer de Toten, Requiem's elite strike team stopped Dr. Alexandra Valentina from unleashing an undead army, the Nazis, into our dimension. 
Ryan, narrowly escaping Omega Group's clutches thanks to Samantha Maxis and her newfound Dark Ether powers. In Forsaken, the final round based map in Cold War Zombies, the team is ready to finish the fight at the heart of Omega Group, a secret test site in the USSR that threatens to invite an even greater supernatural threat into the world. Behind the scenes, Requiem's secretive director makes the call to approve Maxis for Operation First Domino as Requiem and Omega prepare for the final showdown. So, the director has been up to no good. We know from an intel in the French version of the game that's probably going to be releasing with Season 6 that the director was the one to even construct Requiem in the first place. So he has some sort of grandmaster plan that we're not exactly sure what it is, but I think he's basically an anti-hero. He's been interrogating and harassing Samantha in order for her to better understand and harness her Dark Aether powers, and she's probably going to use those Dark Aether powers to defeat the Forsaken or trap him within the Dark Aether. I feel like the way the Forsaken might end is not Samantha dying like some people previously thought, but it's been confirmed that she's probably not going to die now, but she might end up getting trapped in the Dark Aether, and then maybe she'll be trapped in there for ages and turn into her evil self again, just like we saw in the past when she was a child, and then within the next track title, we might see what has happened to Samantha years later after she's been in the Dark Aether for ages. But anyways, that's just a guess. I do wonder what the director's plan is though with Project Janus. Now, we believe that the director is probably Eddie, the new incarnation of Richtofen. It's pretty much confirmed at this point, and I do think that the Forsaken is probably going to reveal it. I will leave a link down in this video's description in which I talk about all of the evidence for it, but there's been even more evidence since I recorded that video, but it's pretty much obvious at this point. But yeah, Requiem and Omega are going to have their final showdown as they are racing against rescuing Zykov. The thing is, though, within the gameplay trailer, written in blood on the wall, reads Krevchenko lies. So right now, Krevchenko is going along with this idea of trying to rescue Zykov, but I think it's very obvious that Zykov is most likely just a trap for the Forsaken to escape, and Omega and Requiem are being manipulated. But maybe Krevchenko knows this, and he has some sort of other plan or some sort of other motive, and he's going to try and harness the Forsaken's powers or do something else, but he is up to no good. Clearly, he's lied about something, and I do think that it's got something to do with Zykov and the Forsaken. Maybe he does indeed know that it's a trap. I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. Anyways, we're seeing two new perk machines in Forsaken. So first of all, we're seeing a perk machine for Death Perception now. And yeah, the perk machine looks really cool. It reminds me of Widow's Wine. But yeah, we've had this perk in the Wonderfish machine for a little while now, so we get the general gist of it. But the other perk that's coming in Forsaken is PhD Slider. So yes, it's PhD Slider, not Flopper. However, it is going to have some Flopper elements, which I'll get onto in a second. So we didn't know if it was going to be PhD Flopper or PhD Slider because the Dark Ether jingle found in the files of the game was the old Flopper song. So I'm guessing they're probably going to change the lyrics because the PhD Flopper song says when you dive to prone. So they're probably going to slightly adjust their lyrics to be about sliding. But yeah, PhD Slider was in Black Ops 4 Zombies. So the description says time to get down and send some zombies flying. After downing a bottle of PhD Slider, the 10th and final zombies perk in Black Ops Cold War, an operator can take advantage of the following effect. Sliding into enemies triggers an explosion. The size and damage increases the farther you slide before impact. So it seems like the slide is going to be a dark ether slide and it looks really, really cool. This perk turns you into a living weapon that grows even more deadly as you invest Ethereum crystals into the skill tiers, which feature full immunity to self-inflicted explosive damage, the ability to trigger an explosive payload after falling from a vertical distance, and more. So yeah, we do not have the exact tier upgrades for PhD Slider just yet, but now we know that one of them is going to make you immune to explosive damage that's self-inflicted, and when you drop from a large vertical distance when you fall, explosions will also occur, just like PhD Flopper. So it's basically PhD Flopper without the flop itself, but if you jump off, it will do the same effect as PhD Flopper. I wonder what the other upgrades are going to be though, we're just going to have to wait to find out. And on screen right now you can see what the perk machine looks like. Honestly, I think it's probably one of the worst perk machines we've seen. I don't really like the design that much. I guess it's gone for this really arcade space land type look. I do prefer the original design though. But obviously now they've gone for a more 80s look to all of the perks. But yeah, let me know what you think of it down in the comment section down below. He does have a little cool mascot. I am excited to use this perk and find out what the other abilities are for the tier upgrades. The next thing is that we are going to be seeing the new Chrysalax 
Wonder Weapon. So this is the ultimate tool for splitting zombies like wood. The Crystal Axe can be discovered in Forsaken as part of its own quest through completing trials or by getting your luck at the mystery box. Forged in the dark ether, there is more to this Wonder Weapon than what appears on its surface, boasting the ability to convert between a powerful battle axe and a rapid fire energy weapon. But yeah, this Wonder Weapon is so so awesome and it's based off of old blueprints from Kraft, a demonologist that we're going to learn about in Vanguard Zombies and we know that Strauss has been researching into this. But yeah, this is basically our first look at the vibe we're going to get in Vanguard Zombies since it's got a much more demonic theme. But yeah, this is a true Dark Aether demonic weapon and I'm guessing that probably all of the wonder weapons in Vanguard Zombies since they're going to be following the demonologist Kraft are going to be Dark Aether weapons similar to this. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to Vanguard Zombies and the much more demonic theme and this is just a brief preview of what to expect basically. I can't wait to use the two different variants of this weapon, the battle axe and the rapid fire energy. We are going to be seeing two new support weapons, kill streaks in Zombies 2, which is the ARCXD and the hand cannon. So the ARCXD is an ether remote controlled explosive device that's an advanced support weapon fitted with an ethereum crystal that acts as a decoy emitting a sound to draw enemies near. So when you activate this it'll work like a monkey ball and attract all of the zombies to it. It's probably better for multiplayer games, I guess, but also it means that you can take out a lot more zombies if they're all attracted to you. The ARC XD will continually pulse a small ether blast that can kill normal enemies and launch them on contact. It is capable of fitting through tight crawl spaces, yet powerful enough to send a group of undead soldiers back to their graves. I really do think that this might be involved within the easter egg on Forsaken. It does seem like the perfect addition to be used for an easter egg venturing through small little caverns and air vents, especially because the Forsaken map is going to be based in Omega's test site Anna in Ukraine, which is based off of the red light green light mission from the campaign. And as you can see from the trailer, we are going to be able to explore the America fake town that does feature Burger Town and also Bubby, the mascot. So Burger Town is back, and I'm guessing that Bubby is probably going to be involved in the Easter egg as well, and is going to be probably an AI very similar to on Exo Zombies Burger Town or Infection. But yeah, some people were thinking that maybe the inside of this building is going to be redesigned and changed, but no, the America Town is still present. So the next score streak is the Hand Cannon, originally found as a hidden weapon in the campaign and introduced to multiplayer in Season 4. The Hand Cannon joins zombies, hindered only by a strong vertical kick and slow rate of fire, the Hand Cannon can blast away zombies with ease, especially with precision shots. But yeah, it's probably not too great. I mean, we've got to use the hand cannon before in the Giants in Black Ops 3 Zombies and it really wasn't that good of a specialist weapon. We'll have to wait and see how good this one is. Next up for Onslaught content, which is PlayStation exclusive, although Xbox and PC are going to be getting Onslaught very soon now, around the release of Vanguard. But PlayStation operators prepare for Onslaught Elite and the journey deep into Adler's mind. So Season 6 will see the multiplayer map Deprogram, which I'll come on to in a second when I go over the multiplayer player maps added to the onslaught rotation. So call up your duo and prepare to journey into Adler's mind and the undead's nightmare that the onslaught all provides. So yeah, I can't wait to play this map in onslaught, but perhaps you can step up to the challenge of onslaught elite as well. So there's a new onslaught limited time mode called onslaught elite, which has one major twist. Every surge will spawn an elite enemy, tripling the danger from the usual survival experience. High value targets such as disciples and temp are also included in these surges, making it a true test for the most elite operators. So yeah, this is going to be very difficult. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit intimidated, especially because they're now adding Disciples and Tempest as elites to this Onslaught variant. This does seem like it's going to be a real challenge. So for everyone complaining that Cold War Zombies is too easy, this is going to be a real challenge. So check it out. I mean, Outbreak Survival also recently released, which is a good challenge for those who are complaining that it's too easy. Zombies has always been easy, honestly, but there's challenging aspects too, and these are so some of them, and I do think that Cold War's been doing a good job lately with these limited time modes for Onslaught. So survive 20 cumulative waves in this new mode and you will get a legendary assault rifle blueprint known as the Rock Salt, which is for a highly mobile weapon introduced in Season 1 of Black Ops Cold War. So before I get on with the multiplayer maps that are in the roadmap, let's go over some more secret details for the Forsaken, because Cod Tracker have actually posted some of the achievements early. So one achievement is in Forsaken, stay inside Burger Town for five consecutive rounds 
chance to earn the War of Attrition calling card in Cold War Zombies. And yeah, I really do wonder how Bubby is going to tie into this map as he said. There's another one which is in Forsaken spend arcade tokens at the arcade to earn the coin line calling card. So this is a bit of a throwback to Zombies in Spaceland from Infinite Warfare Zombies. The arcade room is going to be returning from the campaign and we are going to be able to play with the different arcade machines. I'm really happy that they have brought back America Town in this map though. Part of me was wondering they might not. The next achievement is in Forsaken kill an abomination while it still has all three heads to earn the hard headed calling card. So yeah, this is the new boss zombie on the map which is very similar to the Magwas. Of course, it's not an Apothecan though. The Apothecans and the Keepers are no longer. I believe they did re-merge on Tag the Totem but then they were sent into the Dark Aether and began mutating and corrupting all over again. So that's why it resembles the Magwa but it's not a Magwa. It's just that the Apothecans and Keepers were sent into the Dark Aether and begun corrupting over years and now there's new factions in the Dark Aether and new creatures and some do resemble the Apothecans and the Keepers and the Dark Aether does seem to create creatures that are similar to them but they're just not under the faction of Apothecans and Keepers if that makes any sense. But yeah this new Magua variant seems beefy as hell and let's go through the trailer and everything else that we see so when it starts off we see that there is a large Dark Aether storm in the sky and we can see the portal on the left so that's probably going to be how we travel to the other side and inside this building itself but that storm is going to be the main area where I'm guessing the Forsaken is going to make its way out of the Dark Aether thanks to this new breach. And yeah, you can see coming out of the portal which brings you inside the building into the America Town and you can see it's all destroyed and run down and there is a theatre that says Nagdron Totem coming soon so we might be seeing a Nagdron Totem bonus map released as a pre-order bonus for Vanguard for Halloween. As there is a haunting event releasing on the 19th of October for Halloween which I'll come on to in a second. So yeah, Nagdron Totem might be coming to Cold War or Vanguard Zombies. We'll have to wait and see, but I already posted a video on that earlier. It could just be a reference to the Night of the Living Dead movie too, but I'm not exactly sure. And we see Tombstone just down there on the left. That is right by this theatre area. And then we get a look at the Death Perception perk by this caged area. If you've played the campaign, you will recognise a lot of these locations. I may make a video in the future kind of comparing the trailer to the campaign mission so you can get a bit more of a better idea of the map layout but if not just play the campaign mission red light green light and you'll get a good idea we then have another portal here where it says checkpoint and it takes you out to this building area where it says Krevchenko lied that I talked about earlier and this is the main office area for Omega I guess and we get a look at the main portal on the map and this is where we see the boss zombie come out which as I said is called the abomination so probably when you open it up for the first time you're going to have to kill this boss first I would assume we do see that the portal is red as as well as opposed to purple and I wonder why that is. We then get a look at a chopper inside this building. I don't know how they got score streaks to work inside of here because there's no way a chopper would be able to fly in here safely because all it needs to do is just touch th something and it'll just completely get taken out of the sky. Helicopters are very delicate. We then get a look at PHD slider and we get to see it in action as you can see when he slides. It emits all of this dark ether energy that takes out the zombies. We then get a look at the wonder weapon as it's slashes through the zombies. I'm so excited to use this. It's kind of like a katana and we can see the portal, another angle of it right at the top of the screen. And I'm really liking the atmosphere and the neon lights of this map. We get a look at the other variant of the wonder weapon here as it shoots these electric shots into the boss. And yeah, that's pretty much all of the zombies footage. Then it cuts to the numbers stuff. So now I've gone through all of that. Let's go through all of the other season six content. So as I said, we're going to be seeing a new multiplayer map, which is called D program. And this is going to be a distorted hallucination. So during Adler's interrogation and deprogramming, memories from his convoluted past come to life as a warped combat arena in deprogram. Here, you will pass through red doors as the fight rages on throughout Adler's broken mind. Each part of this map is a fragment of Adler's memories stitched together to form one of the most unique map experiences ever in Call of Duty. The red doors found throughout deprogram can be used to quickly traverse the map, which may lead to power positions over objectives or be used for four dimensional plays that can help you outsmart opponents and I'm really excited for this map because it's going to be so different with all of the different hallucinations and distortions and you can see the red in the sky and this map is going to feature the Adler's heads that we see within the break on through campaign mission which is in Vietnam which is also a hallucination as Bell was similarly brainwashed and this is available for 6v6. I wonder how it's going to be in onslaught with the distortions it's also going to make for the most unique onslaught map which I'm so excited for. The next map we're going to
to be seeing is America, which is another 6v6 map, and this is based on the same location as the multiplayer map, as this is a Soviet recreation of an American Main Street, and it features the Burger Town. So yeah, this is very similar to the Zombies map Forsaken. A lot of people, after they played Red Light, Green Light, were asking for this as a multiplayer map too, and were finally getting it. So it's a secret military facility in the heart of the USSR. This medium-sized map will have you fighting through a replica of a town that introduces a pizzeria theatre and a Burger Town mock-up. Maneuver through these buildings for close quarter battles and watch out for long-range weaponry that is sure to lock down the block. We're then going to be seeing Glue Boko, which is a 2v2 and 3v3 gunfight map. Taking place in the underground vault of the KGB headquarters, Glue Boko serves as the newest map where operators can battle in gunfight and face-off variants, including face-off 6v6. The Lubyanka building's underbelly can be home to extremely fast-paced engagements as fights will spill out around and on top of the main briefing table. Don't forget to capture that overtime flag if your opponent is still standing during a round of gunfights. Next up, in terms of operators and weapons and stuff like that, we're going to be seeing Alex Mason added as an operator, and this artwork looks so, so cool. I love this render here. So NATO and Perseus have saved their strongest reinforcements for the final showdown ahead. So Alex Mason's going to be available at launch, and he's obviously the original Black Ops protagonist, but he's arrived just in time for what could be Adler's and Stitch's ultimate duel. So Adler and Stitch are going to fight head to head in season six and probably one of them is going to die and whichever one survives is probably going to be in the next Black Ops game. So hailing from the harsh wilderness within the Golden Heart of Alaska known as Fairbanks, as Mason was raising his son in Alaska, he's now come back to the field. So Mason is a former Marine whose service record and reputation are mired in controversy. Obviously because Black Ops 1 does hint that he could have been the actual JFK assassin as he was brainwashed by the numbers program, so despite his impulsive and reckless behaviour, his effectiveness in the field is indisputable. Mason is responsible for single-handedly neutralising Dr. Friedrich Steiner, assisting the CIA in preventing a Nova 6 attack, eliminating Nikita Dragovich and helping Adler and his team in stopping Operation Greenlight from destabilising the world during the Cold War. And it is hinted on Golova that Dragovich may still be alive because there is a wanted sign and he does look very similar to Dragovich, but that's off topic. So Mason's available in Season 6 and he's going to be the Tier 0 Battle Pass Operator. So what do the numbers mean? Purchase the Battle Pass and find out. We're going to be seeing another Operator, which is called Fuse, part of Warsaw Pact, and he's what we saw defusing the bombs, hence his name, within the Season 6 cutscene. So Benito Fuse Ortega is a soldier of fortune hired by Perseus for his bomb disposal service and expertise. His mission, as seen during Season 6's intro, is disrupt the seismic devices found under Verdansk. Fuse is a thrill seeker from Madrid who never turned down a high stakes job. No matter the risk, despite the loss of his legs, he's persevered, becoming the elite operator he is today, keeping his elastic sense of humour and allegiance to the almighty dollar in the process. And he's going to be available as a store bundle later in season. But yeah, he did unfortunately lose his legs, but it doesn't seem to be stopping him. I'm excited to see how season 6 concludes though with Perseus and Adler and crew with Mason and Hudson going head to head, the Soviets versus America in the final showdown in Verdansk. Next up, there's five new weapons in Season 6. So we have the .410 Ironhide Shotgun, which is a lever action shotgun that does high damage at close range with an improved fire rate. It's a reliable two-shot kill with a short one-shot range and it's obtainable via Tier 15 over the Battle Pass. We have the Grav Assault Rifle and this is basically just the Galil. It's a fully automatic assault rifle which is fast firing with improved range. It's the fastest bullet velocity in class with modest damage and moderate recoil and it's available at tier 31 in the battle pass. We then have a two-handed melee weapon which is the double bit axe with a straight wooden handle for powerful strings. Fill your foes and use them as kindlings. So there's two ways to obtain this. Either complete an in-game challenge in Warzone multiplayer or zombies to obtain the base weapon or pick up the unique weapon blueprint version of this melee tool as a bundle available at Season 6's launch. We then have the LARPA SMG. This is going to be available later on in Season as a bundle in the store or via a challenge. It's a fully automatic submachine gun. It's a lightweight prototype with reliable damage and good firing control, improved handling and range with a slower rate of fire. And this is available in the Haunting event, which is a Halloween event later in Season, both as an event reward, similar to Psy from the Numbers event, or via a store bundle via Weapon Blueprint. We then have the Hammer and Sickle, which is once again later in season. A very cool weapon. It's a dual wield 
melee, a powerful union between industrial and agricultural tools demonstrate the strength of labor with deadly melee attacks at close range. Following the haunting, prepare to crush your enemies with the might of the hammer and sickle. So you can earn this dual wield weapon in Cold War and Warzone either as a melee based challenge or via a new store bundle later in season. So next up, we are going to be seeing the haunting part two. So it's going to be similar to the haunting of the dance that we saw last year for Halloween. And this is going to be starting on October the 19th. And we're going to get more details on October 18th right before it launches and what exactly is coming in this event. The last event saw Zombies Royale, which is basically kind of like infected on Warzone. So I'm guessing Zombies Royale is going to be returning to Verdansk and zombies are going to be coming back. And they're probably going to reskin Verdansk so that it's set at night and is Halloween themed. And there's probably going to be ghosts and stuff roaming around the map, just like last time. But last time it was themed around Saw. But this time there's going to be a new operator, which is Ghostface from the Scream movie franchise. And there's going to be a Donnie Darko skin. And previously we thought this was going to be an operator, but apparently it's going to be an operator skin for Baker instead, according to Cod Tracker. But I'm excited to see what other stuff is available in this haunting event. And as we're saying, maybe Nagdron's Hunt might be coming as a pre-order bonus, because we know that a Halloween pre-order bonus is coming. And it makes sense to be Nagdron's Hoenn since it's zombies. And it says Nagdron's Hoenn coming soon in Forsaken. So these are the new prestige levels for becoming master, which you can see on screen. And there's going to be some ultra rare operator skins. We see a bunch of them in the trailer, but the operator ultra rarity skins are going to be for Mason, Weaver, Maxis, and Portnova. The Mason reactive skin is probably going to be the tier 100 skin in the Battle Pass. And they look very similar to some of the skins that we saw in Black Ops 4 with the kind of dark ether theme that are also animated. And there are going to be some Mastercraft blueprints coming too for the Gallo, the AK-47, and the EM-2. And we did get a look at a bunch of them in the trailer and also some screenshots released. Anyways, that's everything I wanted to go over in today's video. A quick reminder, if you want to earn some easy cash on the side, check out Pinecone via the link in this video's description. Simply fill in some quick surveys and you will be rewarded. Anyways, thank you for watching the video and make sure to subscribe if you're not ready for the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.